Good afternoon. <clears throat> Looks like we have a few people that have come in. Let me know if you can hear me and see me and see the slideshow as well. Just type that in the chat. Hello from Ottawa. Hi. Welcome. We are back in my spare room if anybody has ever uh, seen me before, although I'm under construction. So uh, I apologize for the disaster behind me, as well as my missing PSP banner because it is somewhere in my basement. So apologize for that. All right. Welcome back today. If, um, if you haven't been to one before, then that's fantastic. Welcome to just, uh, you know, your first ever Demio webinar if you haven't been to, to a session before. Uh, if you're, you've been to a few, whether it's been with me or another HP staff uh, across the country, then you kind of know the deal of what we're about to be doing. So thank you for joining us today. We do have a smaller group today. I think a lot of people are starting to, you know, go back to work. Um, and I mean, by back to work, I mean back to their physical workplace versus uh, in their homes. So I think we're, we're seeing some, some smaller numbers. Plus it's, uh, you know, the weather's starting to become nicer. So, all right. So before we get started into the content today, I do need to just read off um, our slide that we read off every time. So just to let you know, the presentation you're about to view is the intellectual property of the Department of National Defense. And any reproduction or retransmission of the slides contained in this presentation is strictly forbidden. Some of the topics discussed in this webinar may be of a sense of nature and are not appropriate for children, so we do ask for parental discretion. So today we're going to be talking about energy drinks, um, specifically in regards to adults. Um, children shouldn't be consuming energy drinks, and we will touch base on that, So, but it's not sensitive material necessarily today. Uh, please understand that people's stories are theirs alone to tell, and anything that is shared by participants in this webinar, either on camera or in the chat, is not to be discussed outside of the webinar. And this webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing later on on calfconnection.ca. So though active participation is highly encouraged, you may simply follow along without using the chat and or video microphone functions if you prefer. So if you haven't been to a session with me before, I don't turn on the vet camera or mic functions for the group until the end, just because generally, especially with larger groups, uh, some people forget to turn off their mic. Uh, so then you're hearing everything that's going on in the background. Um, if you want your mic turned on or your camera turned on at the end to ask a question um, or at any time during the session, just let me know and I can turn that on for you. Um, but you don't have any requirement to do so. You can just type in the chat if you have any questions or, or you're engaging in, it, in this situation. Um, with the polls, I will be putting a couple polls on. I can't see who's answering what, so it is it is anonymous. So just feel free to be um, you know completely honest in there. They're not very intense polls. Um, you know, we'll just be asking you if you've consumed energy drinks before um, and no judgment here whatsoever. Okay, so today we are gonna be talking about energy drinks, the buzz on energy drinks. Um, if you haven't seen me before, my name is Lisa Fisher. I'm the health promotion specialist at Four Wing Cold Lake. Um, and generally I also, uh, since my mic will be on, I'll give you a quick heads up that uh, my dog may bark at some point. So I will apologize in advance for um, his rude behavior, <laughs> but sometimes he just needs to let me know things are happening outside. So before we get started, I am going to ask you a couple poll questions. So if you've been on a session before, you know exactly what I'm about to do. So the first one here is, what is your affiliation with the CAF community? So let me know if you're a serving member, a veteran, a family member, a civilian employee, or other. Okay, so majority of people have answered. We have one holdout right now. Um, so we've got a couple serving members and civilian employees, so fantastic. As I said, very small group today. Um, in the chat box, so we have Ottawa joining us. Where else are we joining from? And is your weather nice there? Cold Lake, man. It's sunny in Cold Lake. I mean, it's not super hot, but it's sunny, which is better than rain because I think we're supposed to rain again tomorrow. 
yeah, for now, it's sunny for now, yeah. All right, a couple of people are a little quieter. That's okay. We'll get started in the in the topic then. Okay. So I am going to ask a poll question here, just to ask if you have if you do consume energy drinks. So you'll see that being shared right now, so that you can say yes, no, or not currently, but you have in the past. Okay. So majority don't consume energy drinks. Um, well, and nobody consumes energy drinks currently, um, but majority are saying they haven't in the past. Um, so that's interesting to know. Um, so this, oh, sunny and hot in Ottawa, perfect. Um, so for those who haven't consumed energy drinks in the past and they currently don't, um, this would be good information to kind of know whether you should be in the future or if you do know anybody that is concerned currently consuming energy drinks, maybe giving them some, some feedback or some uh, insight into, into their usage. Um, full disclosure, I don't currently consume energy drinks, but I have in the past and I was actually um, very, I wouldn't use the word addicted to them, but I definitely use them quite frequently uh, in my university years. Um, until I actually had a very bad experience with them. So um, I do use that full disclosure just so you have an idea of what my experience is with that. All right, so let's move on to the information. So when we're talking about an energy drink, it essentially is any product in the form of a drink or concentrated liquid that claims to contain a mixture of ingredients having the property to raise energy levels and physical alertness, excluding sports drinks. So energy drinks are marketed to essentially allow a person to become more alert um, or, you know, if somebody's in a slump to kind of get them to be able to, to function, right? Uh, which is generally why people use them, but there's a lot of different reasons why people do use them and we'll go over that. Oop, sorry. When we're looking at just the brief history of energy drinks, and this is not everything by by any means, um, but in 1960, uh, half highly caffeinated sports drinks appeared in Europe and Asia, and then in 1987, Red Bull, which is I think the the sport the energy drink that most people are remember as the first one, uh, it was introduced in Austria in 1987. In 1997, so 10 years later, it came to the United States. In 2004, those five hour energy shots debuted. So you probably see them um, just, you know, I've seen them a lot of times at the counter at uh, gas stations. And I think they actually have eight hour energy shots now. In 2009, Red Bull became legal in Norway and Colombia, uh, prohibited the sale and marketing of energy drinks to kids under 14. So it became legal in one country and then Colombia actually prohibited the sale under, for kids under 14. Uh, in 2005, Four Loco, which is a mixture of alcohol and caffeine, uh, debut. And 2001, Rockstar debuts. 2002, Monster Energy Drink debuts. So you'll see that they're kind of coming really quickly at this point. Uh, in 2010, the FDA bans energy drinks containing alcohol in various states. And in 2013, Health Canada transitions energy drinks from natural health products to food uh, products. Um, I will say that Red Bull, I believe, was introduced uh, in Canada in 2004 as well. So um, it came to the United States in 1987 and then it came to Canada in 2004, the same year that the five hour energy shots um, were starting to become on the market. So you can see that there's definitely, it started quite a, a while ago um, and it's still really just keeping on going. 2013 is the last one I have on here, but um, there has been other other you know things happening since then. You've probably seen now that there's the um, the relaxing drinks on the market as well. Um, so those are within the last few years. Um, they have they believe that the global energy drink market is expected to reach 84.8 billion dollars US by 2025. So it is a huge huge market, um, definitely highly used by by people across the world. Okay, so now I'm gonna ask you, why do people use energy drinks? So just put that in the chat, why you think people use energy drinks. We've already covered one thing, one part. To stay alert, yep. Yeah. It might be tricky for those who don't use energy drinks to kind of think as to why somebody would. Power, yeah.
So here you go. So state alert or to stay awake. Alternative fluid. Yep, that's a good one as well. And have energy. Yep, to stay alert or awake. Energy. There you go. Motivation. So have an energy drink, feel more motivated to get things done and be more productive. Sports performance. So even though they're not recommended for sports performance, people do use them and they are marketed toward athletes. Thirst. Somebody's just thirsty. So why not grab something instead of water, right? They're using it as an alternative fluid. Gaming. So uh, gamers, you'll see, uh, will use energy drinks to stay awake for longer, to be able to game longer. Um, and a lot of the esports, which are the electronic sports, are actually sponsored by energy drinks and drink companies. Studying. Um, so that is actually the reason that I used it in university because um, I procrastinated, so I had poor time management. Um, and so to stay awake later to study for the exam or write a paper, I would use energy drinks. Not a good idea. Um, I learned how to manage my time since then because it's a bit of a healthier coping strategy, right? To improve the taste of alcoholic beverages, and we'll go over uh, energy drinks and alcohol. Partying. And then health. They believe that uh, it's a healthier thing to be drinking than something else. Um, or they feel, you know, um, that there are certain things that are included in it that that boost. So like there's maybe the B vitamins that are good or or the ginseng or, or what have you. So speaking about that type of stuff, let's go into what makes up an energy drink. So energy drink composition. Um, it's not just caffeine, okay? So you have your water, obviously, is gonna be a big part of it. Then sugar. So most energy drinks are high in sugar in the form of either high fructose corn syrup or cane sugar. Uh, higher sh high sugar drinks have been linked to obesity and sugar consumption does cause can cause tooth decay, especially if you're not brushing your teeth after drinking the beverage. Um, the sugar in energy drinks do does cause blood sugar and insulin to spike, which can later result in that crash-like feeling. So it's not just a calf coming down from the caffeine, it's also coming down from that sugar high. Now, of course, I've ha also had people that say, oh, it's fine because I drink sugar-free energy drinks. So if you do drink those, um, you may be consuming a number of artificial sweeteners. So just keep that in mind. Now, there's a debate around the negative health effects of artificial sweeteners um, around the world, specifically our aspartame. However, currently, um, all major health institutions are regarding them as safe. Um, and just because it's a sugar-free doesn't necessarily doesn't mean that the energy drink is still okay or healthy for you. Uh, synthetic or natural caffeine. So you have uh, such things as grana, yerba mate, or coffee beans, which would be added, um, or they'd be natural. Taurine. So taurine is a non-essential amino acid, and there are no effects from taurine in energy drinks that have been documented. However, there were some countries, so France, Denmark, and Norway actually originally banned energy drinks because of the taurine content. Um, but they've since accepted that the taurine consumption is safe based on the evidence to date, so they haven't been, they've, uh, you know, relinquished those bans. Uh, the, amount the amount of taurine placed in energy drinks is actually well below what would be needed for therapeutic benefits or for any potential side effects. So even though there's not going to be a potential side effect, probably from a taurine consumption, um, you're not going to be getting any health benefits from consuming taurine for an energy drink. So that's one of the reasons you're consuming it. You're not getting that benefit. Uh, ginseng and other herbs. So some studies have linked ginseng especially to sleeplessness, but other studies have refuted it. So you can see that there's a lot more research that needs to be done in this uh, area. Possible symptoms from consuming ginseng, there's quite a few of them, but just to give you an idea, uh, low blood, pr blood pressure, palpitations, um, vertigo, headache, insomnia, mania, um, euphoria. If you're pregnant and consuming, then uh, it's been linked to miscarriage. So a lot of different uh, side effects that can come from consuming ginseng. B vitamins. So this is kind of a key, keep in mind um, is that overconsumption can be problematic. So when you have more than 35 milligrams of niacin or B3, uh, it's gonna cause flushing of the skin. However, if you intake more than 3000 milligrams in a day, it can result in liver toxicity. So we do wanna be careful and, and understand how much is actually in that energy drink. Um, for B6, if you have more than 100 milligrams of B6 uh, at a time, it can cause sensory nerve problems. So a feeling of uh, like a burning sensation of the skin and it can cause skin lesions. So even though it sounds like a great thing that says B vitamins are added, um, there could be some potential side effects from overconsumption. I'm probably gonna butcher the next one, but glucor, glucoronolactone, 
I think I didn't do very well at that. Um, there have been no side effects reported for that, um, but safety is still being debated. So there's more research that needs to be done. And the last one there is inositol. Um, it is part of a vitamin B complex. There are no major side effects that have been reported, um, but it can cause dizziness, tiredness, headaches, and an upset stomach. And if you ingest large quantities, it's been linked to diarrhea. So if you've ever, so caffeine itself can cause some GI upset, but if you've ever had an energy drink, you might have realized that you need to you'll go to the bathroom very quickly, um, or you just feel really upset stomach, or you have headaches and stuff, and that could be um, that ingredient in there. So I'm going to go over a couple of ingredients just so that you kind of have an idea. Caffeine is going to be the first one, of course, because that's one of the main reasons people are consuming these, right? They want the energy. Uh, so the caffeine is the world's most mild, widely consumed stimulant, um, and it does occur naturally among several plants. So if you're looking at the coffee bean, the cola nut, the uh, tea leaf, or the cocoa seed, it is occurring naturally in all of those plants. Um, and it is in many food and beverage items, supplements, and medications. So you're going to find it not just in, you know, your energy drink or your coffee, but you also find it in tea, chocolate, um, anything that's cocoa or coffee flavored, so ice creams or, or uh, cereals. Um, you can find it in certain supplements. So um, weight loss supplements a lot of times will have it because they, they claim to, to aid in weight loss. Um, you may see it in medications, so such as Midol or um, headache medications because it has been found to improve the effectiveness of those medications. So keeping in mind that you might be consuming caffeine in uh, different versions throughout the day, not just your energy drink if you're choosing to consume an energy drink. Now, there are benefits to caffeine, um, right? Caffeine is not a horrible, horrible thing. Um, Overconsumption is where we, we see the problem. So uh, caffeine does stimulate the brain. So for those people who want to become more alert, caffeine is, of course, going to do that. Um, there have been found to be performance benefits, especially for endurance athletes. So those benefits are seen in a moderate intake versus a higher intake because a higher intake is actually going to increase your negative side effects from caffeine. So uh, those performance benefits include increased oxygen consumption and increased mobilization of fatty acids as fuel. So endurance athletes specifically are going to find um, more of those benefits. Ongoing research is needed on the benefits of coffee on longe longevity, cognitive decline, and diabetes. So there's a lot of things out there, and you've probably seen some articles about, uh, you know, this many cups of coffee a day is beneficial and, and or this coffee is bad for you or what have you. And it's a lot of back and forth because they really need more research on the long-term effects or benefits. Now I'm gonna ask here, does anybody know how many, uh, what's the maximum amount of milligrams that you should be taking of caffeine per day as a healthy adult? If you don't know the milligrams, how many cups of coffee equivalent? Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. 400 milligrams. Good job with that. Depends on the cup. Yeah. So let's see what a cup means. <laughs> so I'm going to put this up here. It's not just healthy adults. I've put all uh, age ranges here. So if you have a child 12 and under, the maximum recommended daily caffeine intake would be 2.5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Um, we're not recommending they drink coffee by any means, but just keep in mind that, you know, chocolate has caffeine, right? Um, now that changes when they get a little old, when they have different age ranges. So you'll see that four to six years is 45 milligrams, seven to nine, 62.5, and 10 to 12 years is 85 milligrams. Now, if you have a teenager who's 13 and over, same thing, 2.5 milligrams, a kilogram of body weight. Um, so you'll see that if they're at this certain amount of kilograms for body weight, they're going to be able to consume this many milligrams of caffeine. I'm not going to go specifically over that. For women who are planning to become pregnant, preg are pregnant, or are breastfeeding, uh, the maximum recommended daily intake is 300 milligrams, and that's the equivalent of about two and a quarter cups of coffee. Now, this is filtered coffee containing 135 milligrams of caffeine per cup. Um, so 250 milliliter cup of coffee gen generally, right? Um, depending, of course, on the strength of your coffee and all of those things. Uh, if you are a woman who is, um, you know, planning on becoming pregnant, are pregnant, or breastfeeding, speak to your healthcare provider before consuming caffeine, of course. And for healthy adults, uh, you got it on the head there, 400 milligrams, which is approximately three cups. Um, that's containing 135 milligrams of the caffeine per cup. So yet again, it's going to depend on the strength. It's going to depend on the size of your, your cup. Um, but just kind of keep that in mind. Now, that's the maximum recommended daily intake for the entire day, including all caffeine. So not just your coffee or your energy drinks, but any caffeine that you're consuming with your medications, your supplements, your chocolate, your flavored things, all of that stuff. 
okay? Now looking at that, what are the drawbacks? So caffeine does have some drawbacks. Um, possible undesirable side effects could include sleep disturbances, especially if you're going to consume it um, at past the late afternoon. Headaches, palpitations, agitation, restlessness, irritability, anxiety, tremors, and GI discomfort. Um, if you use it excessively, it could lead to nausea, vomiting, convulsions, and heart problems. Um, and it can result in physical and psychological dependence. So if anybody um, is a coffee drinker or a you know, caffeinated tea drinker or an energy drink user, um, you may feel withdrawal symptoms if you've tried to quit before or if you're currently trying to quit. Um, I know uh, when I stopped using energy drinks, I definitely had some withdrawal symptoms. And same when I used to drink a lot more coffee because I was a college recruiter, so I traveled a lot. Same thing, I experienced withdrawal um, when I was cutting, well, I tried to cut cold turkey and that's not the best idea. We want to, you know, reduce slowly so you're not experiencing those withdrawal symptoms. Because when you feel, you know, headaches and, and nausea and irritability and all those things, you're going, well, it's not worth it. I'm gonna just start drinking my, having my caffeine again. So the bottom line when it comes to caffeine is we want to limit your caffeine consumption to a maximum of 400 milligrams per day for a healthy adult. And if you are consuming large amounts of caffeine, slowly reduce that intake over time to decrease withdrawal symptoms. So you're not feeling so horrible that you just start using again. So when we look past caffeine, energy drinks um, are sold as a traditional sweetened beverage. So some people consume them the same way that they would a regular soft drink. So instead of having a, a can of pop, they're going to grab for an energy drink. I, it, they do have impact on weight and dental health. So I did mention already that that sugar um, has been, high sugar drinks have been linked to obesity and tooth decay, especially if you're not brushing your teeth afterward. Um, it is associated with the world of sport. So many sporting events, athletes and teams are actually sponsored by energy drink companies. Um, I've seen quite a few ads where they have, you know, runners um, with the energy drink ad or, or uh, people playing soccer or basketball or what have you. And they're not recommended for that. Um, there are risks when combined with alcohol. So energy drink labels actually state specifically that they should not be mixed with alcohol. So legally in Canada, you can't um, sell caffeine, uh, sell energy drinks and alcohol together. So if you've ever gone um, to the, sh uh, the bar and you've asked for a Jagerbon, you're going to get the can of Red Bull and then the shot glass with your shot in it. And they know that you're obviously going to, you know, pour it together, um, but that's how they get away with that, is that that's how they do it. Uh, when you go into the stores, you have the commercially available alcoholic energy drinks. And the way they're able to do that is because they contain natural sources of caffeine and they don't have synthetic caffeine added. So it's illegal to add synthetic caffeine, which is why you can't have the bartender add the Red Bull to your shot. Um, but in the stores, you can have those, um, those energy drink alcoholic beverages because it's natural caffeine. So if you ever wonder why that is. Um, and they are marketed based on a life lifestyle. So they specifically appeal to young people and those seeking performance. That's what the target market is. Um, of course, you do have people who are, you know, older that do consume energy drinks, but that's really who they're, they're aiming for. Um, so even though it says on the label that uh, people under the age of 18 or not to consume the beverages. Um, I definitely consumed them in high school and I was, it was very easy to purchase them because it wasn't illegal to purchase them uh, back east. Um, but I know that some provinces and, and territories have some regulations around that, which is fantastic because they shouldn't be consumed by those under the age of 18. So let's, I didn't want to talk about sugar just a little bit here. So think about this. If you're choosing to have an energy drink instead of coffee, would you put 13 teaspoons of sugar in your cup of coffee? Um, most people wouldn't. Uh, it's funny because I actually asked this um, to, <laughs> to cadets once and they were like, well, yes, of course I would. I said, OK, so you you want just sugar <laughs> um, because they they don't like the taste of coffee. So they were they were consuming that much sugar. So we had a whole conversation about sugar consumption and everything. Um, but that is essentially if you're if you're having one of the regular energy drinks that are not like a low sugar, zero sugar, it's equivalent to about 13 teaspoons of sugar. So going further into this, let's take a look at this graph. So we've said that energy drinks are consumed sometimes as an alternate fluid because we're thirsty. So water, which is the best choice, doesn't have any sugar in it because it's water, 
right? Even if you don't like the taste of water, if you just flavor it with herbs or vegetables or fruit or, you know, whatever, it's still not going to have any sugar in it, right? It's just going to be infused. It's different when you add the squirts of stuff, still a better option, but then, you know, having an energy drink, but uh, that, that might change the sugar content. If you're grabbing an iced tea, uh, you're going to have 355 milliliters um, of iced tea. You're going to have eight cubes of sugar, essentially, um, or eight teaspoons. Your pop would have about 10. Your energy drink would be about 14 if you're having a 500 milliliter energy drink. Specialty coffee is up to 17, and a sweet bubble tea is 21. So we want to actually limit our sugar intake um, to to a maximum of 13 teaspoons or less. So the World Health Organization recommends reducing sugar intake to less than 10% of your total energy. So for example, if you consume a 2000 calorie diet, that would mean that you are not having any more than 50 grams of sugar per day, which is 12.5 teaspoons, okay? Um, it's even strong, more recommended that you actually put it down to 5% of your total daily energy versus the 10, okay? Um, just kind of a quick note on sugary drinks. Um, it is better to eat your calories than to drink them, right? You're going to be fuller longer if you have if you're eating versus than drinking uh, your calories, um, and you're not going to have you know as much sugar intake potentially. Um, some some sugary drinks actually contain as many calories as an entire meal, um, so that's kind of important to keep in mind. Excess calories, of course, can lead to weight gain, and excess body weight can increase risk of diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. So if that doesn't bother you, if you, you know, find your teeth are important, um, when you sip sugary drinks throughout the day, it actually can harm your teeth, which leads to cavities or pain. So if you're a person that has to go to the dentist often because you have cavities, take a look at what you're consuming um, with your beverages. So energy drink regulation. So as I mentioned in 2013, um, well, 2012 essentially, but 2013 is when it became, came into effect. Um, Health Canada actually regulated energy drinks under the food and drugs regulations. So they were originally under the natural health products regulations. So that means that energy drinks are classified as food, which means all caffeine must be listed on the label. They need to have a nutrition facts table and they need to have a list of allergens and warnings. So the warnings on the label would be high caffeine content, um, that they are not intended for kids, pregnant or breastfeeding women or people sensitive to caffeine, um, that they are not to consume more than X amount a day. Um, and to not mix them with alcohol. Um, energy drinks are included in the category of beverages that have a caffeine content between 200 to 400 milligrams uh, per liter. Um, energy shots, so those five or those eight hour, are still subject to the Natural Health Project product regulations. Um, so they are regulated differently because they're not uh, a beverage, they're a, sh a supplement shot, essentially. So when we look at um, the maximum of content of caffeine allowed, just to kind of give you an idea. So this is what Ca Health Canada is, is saying. So the maximum allowed caffeine level than the caffeine equivalent per container. So when you're looking at an energy drink, if you have a non-resealable container or those under 750 mils, um, you can have a max 400 milligrams of caffeine per liter or 180 milligrams per container. Okay. Um, when you look at a resealable container of 750 mils, which I personally haven't seen, but I'm sure they exist. Um, if they didn't, it'd be strange why it would have that issue. Uh, max 360 milligrams per liter for a resealable container. In comparison, if you have a carbonated soft drink, your cola has a max 200 milligrams per liter, and your other soft drinks would have a max 150 milligrams per liter. So quite a big jump um, in the amount. So if you're looking at a can of cola, you'd have a maximum of 71 milligrams of caffeine in that 355 milligram can or milliliter can, right? If you're looking at a energy drink, which is 475, 73 milliliters, which is the general size, at least that or even bigger, you're looking at 180 milligrams per, okay? Now this, um, this is a lot of information, I'm not gonna read it all, uh, but then we're gonna look kind of, there's coffee and coffee beverages, carbonated soft drinks again, energy drinks and concentrated energy drinks. Just to give you an idea of what, when you actually look, go to the store or you're purchasing something, what the differences are. So if you're having you know, a filtered store-bought 250 milliliter cup of coffee, um, you're gonna have between 78 to 243 milligrams of caffeine in that cup, right? So if you just go and grab one through a drive through or what have you. If you're grabbing a, uh, a can of, of Coke or a can of Pepsi, that's 355 milliliter can, 
That's between 37 to 38 milligrams of caffeine, so quite a bit lower than your coffee. If you have an energy drink, so uh, your Red Bull, let's look out just at the 473 milliliter cans. Your Red Bull, 151. Uh, your Rockstar is going to be 160. And your Monster would be 150 to 175. Okay. And then your concentrated energy drink, so those shots, uh, your Red Bull is 80 and your five-hour energy shots are 190. So quite a bit of caffeine in those, in those shots and those energy drinks. Are you, so are you asking if a smoothie that's made at home is included in 13 teaspoons? So if it's, no, so if it's natural sugar from your fruit, then no, because it's 13 teaspoons of added sugar. So essentially, if you are putting in honey or, um, uh, you know, if you're putting in maple syrup or you're putting in juice that has added sugar in there, um, then that would account towards your 13 teaspoons. But if it's just, you know, you're adding your fruit, um, then that's fine. Natural sugars don't count toward those 13 teaspoons. Um, so I will let you know the impact. I'm, so I'm going to keep this slide up for just a second. But your impact on total caffeine intake, to give you an idea. So if you're an adult, so general population, you're in good health, um, it would require the consumption of several energy drinks to reach that maximum caffeine intake level if that was all you're consuming okay so two and a half to five energy drinks depending on which one you're consuming to reach that maximum level that's not we're not recommending that of course because we don't want we don't need to reach that maximum level um potential issues with adult consumption is generally how they're consumed because um, oftentimes there's excessive consumption um, or they're mixing with other substances such as alcohol um, and the lifestyle factors that surround that use. So the combination with alcohol is the using for parties, um, the using to stay awake so that we're not sleeping because sleep is a huge, huge important part of our performance. And if we're using energy drinks so that we're not sleeping, we're really impacting our overall health. So those are where the real issues are in. Um, right now, Health Canada hasn't said that you can't consume energy drinks. Um, they're just really warning against excessive consumption because that's where those issues are going to happen. Now, for some people who are very sensitive to caffeine, um, energy drink consumption could, should probably be off the table completely because uh, they're probably a person that reacts to, you know, even drinking coffee or potentially even having chocolate that has caffeine content in it. Uh, for children 12 years and under, um, the caffeine content of an energy drink exceeds their maximum daily intake, so they should not be consuming it. Um, so energy drinks, other high caffeine beverages should be avoided, and that's been recommended by Health Canada. If you have a teenager that is 13 years or older, um, caffeine content of one energy drink or in combination with other sources of caffeine may be an excessive intake of caffeine uh, for the day. Um, note that the caffeine content of a cup of coffee can also exceed this limit. So really, teenagers shouldn't be consuming coffee or energy drinks. Um, I was actually very surprised when I saw how many um, teenagers were consuming last summer when I ha had a presentation with them, um, both for energy drinks as well as for coffee. Um, consumption of energy drinks or other drinks with high caffeine content should either be completely avoided for teenagers or at least limited um, if being used. The high sugar content and the acidity of energy drinks um, can also justify limiting that consumption because, of course, with those, uh, the the health problems with the teeth and everything. So um, teenagers, children, uh, you know, with their teeth, we don't want to be destroying those teeth. We don't want to be destroying adult teeth either. Um, but, you know, the less they have to go to the dentist as a child, the better, because I know I had to go to the dentist a lot as a kid, and I definitely dislike the dentist now. So... So when we're looking at safety adverse reactions and contraindications, I'm sorry that some of the, the slides are a little bit small, but energy drinks do contain ingredients whose safety has not been established. So even though I did go over and say there hasn't been, you know, um, side effects from some of the ingredients and everything, there is still ongoing research because even though there hasn't been documented side effects, they haven't said it's 100% safe yet. Um, so just keep that in mind that that there is research that still needs to be done, especially on the long-term health effects. And people have had adverse reactions to them. Uh, herbs can also interact with medications and other supplements. So if you're consuming energy drinks, but you're also on different medications or you're consuming suppl other supplements, you need to speak to your healthcare provider to make sure that um, you know, there's not an issue with, with consuming both. 
side effects um, from, from consuming energy drinks can include the following. So nervousness, uh, headache, insomnia, of course, it's keeping you energetic and alert, uh, nausea, vomiting, dehydration, especially when it's being used as a different, as an alternative to water, right? We're going to really dehydrate our body. Um, irregular heartbeat, um, seizures, stroke, and cardiac arrest. So I'll just let you know kind of an, just the reason I realized that uh, they were a really bad idea for me. Um, and I've shared this with uh, with other people as well. So I used to consume energy drinks for um, for staying awake in university to to you know study and everything. And I did an all nighter and consumed energy drink an energy drink to do so. I actually ended up having a seizure the next day, um, which uh, I went through. I had to go through all the neurological um, you know ish, essentially all the I had to go to a neurologist. Um, my license was taken away for a couple months because they had to prove that I didn't have um, another condition such as epilepsy. Um, went through everything. I was completely clear. And the only thing that they could potentially link it to was uh, the energy drink consumption um, being used instead of sleep and being used instead of a different uh, beverage. So definitely concerning. Um, I stopped using them. <laughs> um, and so I don't judge people who do use them, but I definitely recommend that they understand that there are potential risks involved in using them um, and to look at other op alternatives versus an energy drink. Um, if you're exhausted, are you sleeping enough is the big, big question. Are you eating well? Are you being physically active? Those are the things that we want to be really focusing on than just kind of um, leaning on an energy drink to fix our problems. And learn time management because I didn't have that <laughs> and now I do. So here are the recommendations. So we don't want to use them while physically active, can definitely be dangerous to do so. Um, so even though I talked about caffeine being potentially, um, you know, uh, have potential benefits for, for endurance activities, that's, you know, a black cup of coffee, not an energy drink. We don't want to be consuming those. Uh, it is not recommended for children under 18 years, pregnant or breastfeeding women. So if that is you or if you have a child um, or if you have a spouse, um, that is pregnant or breastfeeding or if you have a child under the 18, eight years of 18, um, you know, having conversations with them or making sure your child under the age of 18 is not consuming them. Uh, it is not recommended for those who are sensitive to caffeine. So if you've ever, you know, had coffee and you really got sensitive about it, probably not something you should consume. Um, if choosing to consume energy drinks, we want to do so in moderation. So limited mo no more than 500 milliliters a day, which essentially is going to be a maximum of one, unless you're getting the really small uh, Red Bulls, which are the 250 mils, um, then you can have two a max, but uh, most are about 473 milliliters. So that would be uh, one can a day max. Do not mix with alcohol. Um, so really, really important. There's a lot higher risk when you're consuming, not just for your health, but also for your, for risk of injury, um, decision making, all of those things. So we don't want to be mixing with alcohol. And then don't consume on an empty stomach. Um, those GI upsets are going to be a lot more intense if you're consuming on an energy empty stomach, but also you can, um, you know, increase your risk of, of stomach problems and, and all those other things too. So if you are choosing to consume an energy drink, make sure that you're having a meal prior to doing so. Okay, so that is the, the end of the information I have. Um, I do have a couple poll questions that I need to ask you, um, but then I will definitely open it up to questions if you do have any questions at all. So I'll do the polls first, and then if you have questions, start typing it away. Um, so the first question I have here for you is, I feel I can apply what I learned today in my daily living. So strongly disagree, disagree, neither agree nor disagree, agree or strongly agree. And this could be for yourself, or maybe you're going to be able to apply this um, in your daily living for somebody else. Or maybe you've decided, oh, okay, now I know more about it. I was thinking about potentially consuming them, but I think I'll find a different beverage. Okay, so everybody is at least agreeing or strongly agreeing, so that's fantastic. On the last poll is how satisfied are you with the Demio platform? So that's the platform that we use to bring you these presentations. So are you extremely dissatisfied, somewhat dissatisfied, neither satisfied nor dissatisfied, somewhat satisfied or extremely satisfied? I don't know if you can hear the music in the background, but I think my neighbors are having a, a car washing party. So sorry about that. All right, so everyone's extremely satisfied. That's fantastic. Does anybody have any questions at all? I'll put the resources slide on here for, for anybody who is kind of needing some, some assistance with anything that's going on. If you don't have any questions, just let me know that you're good. Got a couple of things.
Perfect. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you're able to get out and enjoy the sunshine because it seems like it's sunny everywhere that people have been joining us from today, at least. Um, enjoy the rest of your week. Um, I don't have any specific ones coming up for myself that I'll be doing in the future, but I'm sure I'll pop back up on here eventually. Otherwise, um, there are still sessions happening throughout this week, um, as well as the rest of the summer virtual sessions. So definitely take a look at those and join if there's anything that interests you. Thank you again for joining. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.